Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Plapper Platypus is the name and welcome to another Ayudin Chronicles video. Today, we're going to be talking about the five best characters in the early game, excluding Noah. I think Noah is good, but I don't want him on this list because everyone's probably using him anyway as like the main character of the game. So we're going to ignore him and we're going to go over other characters that you can choose to use in your party more freely. Um, I'm going to go over why I think they're good, how to recruit them, and you know why I think you should use them. But really quick before we jump into that, boom thank you to the members thank you to the supporters if you want to support content like this and help us keep pumping out the vids when i say us i mean me then uh consider throwing pat plat a couple bucks a month the support goes a long way or if you don't want to do that just keep watching the video that's fine maybe share it with someone leave a comment that stuff all helps a lot anyway let's jump into it here's a quick overview if you don't want to go into the details and you just want to see which characters i'm going to be talking about uh, it's going to be gyron kuroto zabi yusuke and Iugo. Sorry if I'm messing up these names. I forgot how they pronounced them. But let's jump into it one at a time. It's going to be in a semi-order of weakest to strongest. Um, of like, you know, here's the fifth best. Here's the second best. Here's the, the first best, etc. So I'm putting Zabi as number five here. Um, Zabi is Zob, Zabi the zombie kind of looks like. But the reason why he's on this list is he kind of fulfills a role as a mage that not many other characters can fill well. So first, he has double magic as his first two unlocks. This is very good in the early game, meaning you could just have him as a healer or a damage dealer. Having two different types of magic really does help with just being able to do lots of stuff. Like you can have him as an SOS healer, um, you know, where he uses some of his MP, but then he can also be primarily a damage dealer. Um, overall... He's just good, but there's nothing super unique and special about him, but it's mostly when you compare other options. Like, if you look at other options for, like, mages that fulfill a similar role, like, um, Malore has really bad stats. She has just really bad magical stats because she's, like, half magical, half physical. Same with Francesca. Uh, Francesca, hers are kind of the same. Carrie, although has great stats, she has two rune slots that are just scuffed and not very good. So, like, there's not a lot of, like, pure mages in the early game that fulfill a role that Zabby fills very well. He's got really high magic stats. He's got pretty decent speed. Then he's got lots of MP to kind of keep pumping out the spells. So also, just because I always forget to mention it, this will be with the difficulty settings all on, the max difficulty. I don't know if they're going to rebalance the game before the main launch. I heard that they are. I don't have that information. This is still pre-release uh, before the game is officially out. So Keep that in mind that I'm talking about the game on the hardest difficulty. Um, not as like a, a flex, but like my perspective of what's powerful and why it's powerful is definitely being uh, affected by that. So, Zabi, how to recruit him? He's just, he's going to be story progression. You'll get him automatically maybe five hours into the game. You'll get him in a group after a boss battle, him and his two buddies. So, number four, let me take a look who I'm going to call number four. Number four, I'm going to put... Um, Kuroto here. You get him very early, like in one of the first two towns. It's actually, I mean, I should be a little more specific if I say I'm going to be specific, huh? We should go to the world map here, and we go to, to da, 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 da. let's go to Elstwise. All right. You get him, like, this is, like, going to be basically the first or second town you go to, and he's going to be right over here in this town to the left. Not this one, but the one to the left of this one. Um, and so you go in there, he's going to tell you to go over to the ravine to the right and kill a couple boars. You come back to him, he will join you. So that's all there is to it there. He, he, he's Everyone's going to get him pretty quickly. Um, and why do I think he's good? Honestly, as far as the early game goes, he just has one thing that no one else has. He is very, very fast. His speed is through the roof. Like, let's take a look. Can I look at all my character stats here? Like, if we look at the speeds, it's the foot icon like he's at level 31 sorry hiccups not as high as everyone else but like the speeds are 123 140 130 141 117 and 178 despite being the lowest character eight uh sorry the lowest level in the party his speed is way faster than everyone else's now he also does have a pretty darn good physical defense for a backline and a reasonable magic defense for a backline because he also has a shield so he's a pretty tanky character and he's really fast. His attack is also fine, but it's not like crazy. None of this stuff is like super unique, but a really, really high speed. I really, really value because basically if you can go before the enemy, I, I give him healing magic. 
He doesn't use it that much. He normally just does pretty good damage and is pretty tanky, but I really like him being able to use a recovery wave, like a big AoE heal before the enemy can go. Because sometimes like enemies deal so much damage, you don't want to wait, you don't want to use a healing spell preemptively because MP is a premium. So a lot of times it's like you, you want to heal in, you know, you don't want to heal in case you don't need it. So you want to heal after you take the damage, of course. And because he can go first in the turn, it means you could just do it before the enemy gets a second action. If he if you go late, like your healer is really, really late into the turn, you know, the enemy goes, let's say you're all at full HP, right? A turn starts, so you're not going to heal, you're going to attack. The enemy goes, they deal a lot of damage, and now you're like, oh, I wish I would have healed, but you don't get a heal. The enemy gets to go a second time before you get a chance to heal, letting you have a chance to die, right? So Kuroto has a really, really valuable asset of being super fast. And honestly, if he was only super fast, that would, may not be enough. But I mean, he's the fastest character that I found in the game. There's like one other character I found like 10 hours later that's as fast. Um, but him having just a shield, being very fast, being reasonably tanky and having decent damage just makes him a package that I like having as like an SOS button. Uh, SOS, uh, you know, rune of water in a situation where my other main healers maybe didn't keep up, right? So, very, very good character here, and I like him a lot. So, outside of that, I'm actually going to put number, uh, sorry, uh, four, th five, four, three. I know, I know what I'm doing. This isn't my first day. We're going to do Yugo. So, you get him pretty early. Once you get your castle, you can come back here to Elwise. I'm probably saying these names wrong, and I apologize. But you're going to come in here, and he's going to be, you can see in this little corner here. You know what? I'll just walk over there. There's this little corner over here of like a back alley house. You walk in there, he's gonna, you're gonna see him. He's gonna be like, I got a mission. And you'll be like, I'll help you with the mission. He's like, fuck the mission. I'm going with you instead. He's inside this little house back here, right? So you go in there, he'll join you almost immediately. So why is he good? Honestly, this is a simple one. Just look at his stats. He's at level 30, one, uh, 32, lower than the other characters, but like his physical defense is at 170. His magic defense is at 157. His magic defense is better than my mages would have high magic defense. His physical defense is higher than any other character. His physical attack is higher than any other character that I have. He doesn't have like, and I mean, his accuracy is really good. He even has decent magic for some reason. And he has the best luck. I don't even know what luck does, but he's got the best luck. His stats are fucking high, like really high comparatively to other characters. It feels like he's almost an outlier in terms of the stats. So let's kind of take a look here. So not only are his stats just super high and powerful, like he hits really hard. He's really tanky. He has a taunting counter, so he can actually draw aggro towards him. Very powerful ability. And then when they actually things will hit him, sometimes he'll counterattack with like a really powerful, more than a normal damage attack. So he's just beefed up on stats. He has a really good defensive command that also does a lot of damage. And then, unlike the other characters here, um, he actually has a really, really good... The Rune of Slash is like a super powerful ability. Because a lot of times, you're going to want to be using your defensive command. You're going to want to be using your, you know, either maybe normal attacks even, or maybe magic, something like that. But Rune of Slash is a, an attack that scales the more SP you use. So you're not in a rush to use it. You could always postpone this. So you're not like... If you have like... You know, if you have four this turn, you want to use it, but you're like, okay, I should heal instead, or I should use a rune of fire enhancement instead, or I should defend instead. Next turn, when you have five, you just get more damage for being patient and for waiting. So it's a really good ability. You can use it on one SP. You can use it on five SP. The damage scales. He's got great stats. There's just everything about him. He's one of the best characters, but he's also, the reason he's not on the top of my list is because he's fair. The other two characters are like broken in like different ways, I suppose, but absolutely one of like if this is my protagonist i think this guy's definitely better than noah no this guy does way more damage and is tankier than noah so uh 10 out of 10 i'm keeping this guy in my party until i find someone else that can match his stats at least so number two here is actually going to be our our uh mage here the main mage so this guy the reason he's number two on this list is he basically does everything zabi does but even better so like he's literally the zabi but better so Zabi has, right, 148. Let, let's get to a different uh, screen here. Can I go to this screen? Here we go. So Zabi has 148 magic attack. This guy has 162. Uh, <laughs> this guy has better physical defense. He has w way worse magical defense, but he has a shield as well, which is going to help him in that regard. 
He has like less MP, but more HP. But really what sets him apart is that he's got, he, he basically just does everything Zabi does, but he's a little bit better about it. Because if we look at the special thing here, the unique rune that he has, his unique rune, reduces MP consumption during magic use by 20%. So all spells are 20% cheaper. And I got to tell you, when you are using double MP cost, the difference between something being 80 and being 64 is huge. And it scales the stronger the spells get, right? Because now things at 120, 20, you know, that's 20% less than what it was before. I don't even know what it is when I have Zabi use it because I never use it on Zabi because it's too expensive. 150, right? So he's getting a 30 mana discount. MP is fucking hard to come by in this game. You're, the spells are very expensive, and you cannot heal it in combat. You can't heal it at save points. You got to go back to a town to heal it. So getting discounts on all the magic is so powerful. On top of that, he also just has the really good stats. He is a little fragile to magic damage, but that doesn't really bother me at all. The Rune of conversation, uh, Conservation is very, very strong. And I actually remember you actually unlocked this, and you have to give him this in order to unlock it. So he must take it. But then he doesn't, um, and maybe that's a little Easter egg. Because I remember when you look at the runes, like, oh, this will teach you how to spend less uh, MP on mana. I was hoping that'd be a whole party-wide thing. But it's for him very powerful. Absolutely just the best mage in the game that I've found so far. Much better than the other ones you start with. As soon as you get them, start leveling them up. You don't get this right away, but, like, you'll just want them in your party and start using it. Plus, honestly, the shield's pretty good, too. Being able to use a fourth equipment slot is a pretty big buff. The fact that he can equip everything that this character equips, right? Like the same exact equipment slots, except he also can equip a shield. means he just has one whole equipment slot above what the other characters have. Very powerful. So, but number one here is, you, you know, you can guess it because it's the only character I haven't spoken about. Oh, how do you get this guy? Sorry. Um, I already forgot how to, to mention how you get the uh, Yiren. I don't remember his name. But as you're going to the Tree Folk Village here on the world, let's go to the world map. You're going to be going to the, the Tree Folk Village. Sorry, bad, bad sound. Um, as you're going here, it's going to be in the Great Wood to the south. Or sorry, is it the east or the south? But you're going to enter the Great Wood. On your way there, you're going to fight a boss who's going to give you a rune. You go talk to him. He's sitting by a campfire on the path uh, that you would, you know, you would, you'll probably, you have to walk past him in order to get to the boss that has the rune. So he's pretty much an auto recruit. Um, cause you get the thing from the boss. You just go back and give it to him. Boom. He's in your party. Now, finally, let's go to Yusuke here. Absolutely busted character, busted, busted, powerful character, most powerful character in the game by far. I would say right now that I've seen, and it's, it's pretty simple. There, there's not that much. And so I value, a, I really highly value being able to have magic equipped because all characters have MP. If you don't have magic equipped, it's impossible to use your MP for nearly all characters, right? So he literally can't use his MP. And like I said, MP is scarce. So having 147 unused MP sucks. Despite this character not being able to use magic, at least until level 42, uh, is it, he's still insane. Absolutely still insane. So he just has passively one of like the highest attacks. Like he has, as far as stats go, he doesn't have the absolute highest attack, but he has one of the highest attacks. He is, though he is basically his downside is that he misses more than most people. Um, his speed is like okay. His physical defense is good, but not great. His magic defense is good, but not great. His luck is good, but not great. The only thing that's like I would say is above good is his attack. So why is he so good? Why is he not just a normal standalone character that's like whatever? His runes aren't special. You know, his normal, like, so there's two things. One, he does have a rune of tenacity, which is pretty good. Um, this is his passive. He will always survive a hit with one HP the first time he gets would be knocked down in combat, right? That's pretty powerful. But other than that, like, that's pretty powerful. It's not insane. It's good. Um, just a normal enhancement slot, a normal skill slot. It's all fine. Why is he broken is charge up his defensive command. Defend while building up power. Raise your attack on your next turn. Stacks up to two times. This thing is so much more powerful than it reads. It's already good inherently. Like if you could defend and then not lose damage and instead like if this was like an enemy is going to do a big attack and you want to attack and try to kill him and attack and try to kill him. This character could defend, take less damage and then attack for double damage next turn. That would be pretty good. 
it's better than that. The way it works is like it raises your actual attack stat. And the way it goes into the formula, it seems to be like you get more than double the return. Like, so you get a defend. If, if you, this guy would do 110 damage and then attack again for 110 damage. If you do charge up and then attack, you'll do like 280 damage or something. You'll do more damage than you would have done had you attacked twice. And you're taking less damage while you're doing it. So this just means his damage goes way above everyone else's. Like I had, I, I have a YouTube short you could probably see. But it's like, I have all these characters, they're attacking, they're doing their normal attacks. They're hitting for like 100, 150, 80, uh, you know, 110, all these numbers. He comes in, he, char he charges up, then he charges up a second time. He comes in, he is for like 1,200 damage. Like literally 10 attacks worth of damage for anyone else. He does it over a charge up, charge up attack. So it takes him basically three turns to do almost 10 turns of damage what anyone else would do the whole time. And he's taking less damage the whole time he's doing it. And even if he would die, he still has the rune of tenacity. And his attack is already above uh, rate. So, like, it really comes down to charge up his nuts. Charge up, at least in the current build of the game, is fucking really powerful because of how it actually works with the damage formula. So, you're going to get him pretty early. He's going to join you the second you go up to, like... You're going up north. I, I forget exactly what the, the area is called. But let's teleport out of here. Let's teleport to the... Uh, it's the fort whatever whatever fort zuske you're gonna come in here he's gonna be stopped by the guards you just have him join you and then boom it's done you basically just have him come right here and then you walk in here he's gonna be trying to get stopped and he joins your party for the rest he's willing to throw his life on the line for you because you said you like a shirt or something like that and that's it these are the five characters i mean i've it just for context how good i think these characters are let's take a look at my um Let's go to Avalon inside. Let's take a look at how many characters I have. Prepare for potential spoilers um, of characters. I don't know if there's any, like, I don't have any, like, big, like, holy shit, this is a massive enemy that's now a boss or now something like that. But let's just take a quick look. I just earned 5,000 bucks. Thank you, Castle. So I have this this many characters, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so eight, 16, 24, 32. I have 32 combat characters. These are by far the best out of these 32. Everyone else so far has a reason why they're not as good as the characters in my party, honestly. Um, although I do think Fallward could be pretty good too. I haven't used Fallward much yet, but I do think Fallward could be pretty good. Um, and now I know I put these characters in a video about while they're really good, and I do think they're good. This is primarily what I'm talking about. Like This is like boss killing teams this is teams for pumping damage these characters are very very good for the sustain without losing damage and sometimes over some boss fights maybe you need a lot of sustain because it's going to go long i think these characters have a place but i don't think that from a pure power standpoint it's there they're here because they're really good at helping you maintain um but yeah out of all these characters i mean try to make a case for any of them you know if you're thinking like garain is not as good as malor francesca or carrie i just disagree with you 100 percent I think he's way better than those three for different reasons on each one, um, whether it be for stats or something else. But yeah, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I wish Leon was better, man. I think Leon has potential because he has really good stats, but not enough runes in his lens. And uh, the runes that he does have are just like not good enough, I don't think. But I really like Leon. I think Leon's cool. Um and maybe Yume will be good. We'll find out. I have to I have to level up Yume next. Yume is the one that I, I've like, the reason is they take up two slots. And so I'm real hesitant about that one. But anyway, that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for Platypuses for Platypus. I will see you on the flip-flops. You guys have a great rest of your day. Bye.